Howdy, brothers. Welcome back to another episode of Whiskey and Water. I have convinced Olivia to take this episode from bed. We're actually laying in bed right now. If you guys are watching the like YouTube version of this, this is kind of hilarious. Like, <laughs> It's giving like Dumb and Dumber for some reason. It's on brand. I like it. Yeah, and also we're sharing a mic again because we're in LA and we only have one mic. It, this is hard, guys, but you know what? We make it happen because we love you guys. Two girls, one mic. <laughs> <laughs> she grabbed the mic from me to say that. <laughs> um, so again, we're to, get, to catch you guys up, we are in LA right now. We head to Hawaii tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we are so excited we've both never been to hawaii before so very very excited and just no like you've been to hawaii oh you have yeah you've been she's been to hawaii with, with laura our friend that we're actually going to visit um forgot that she like sometimes does things without me yeah so we're going with laura who's also a frequent podcast listener she tunes in every week and we are so excited so all right she's a fan so our next episode we will be probably recording from the islands you guys from the islands oh hawaii so excited and actually inspired by our vacation brings you this episode <laughs> I told her I was going to be struggling. I'm just, I listen, I tried a matcha latte. It did not hit the way it should have. So you guys, I'm going to do the best I can. And me, on the other hand, um, I took this caffeine. I took this caffeine <laughs> pill that Olivia gave me. She, it was like this, like, it's like this new, like, whatever, a fucking blend of like chaga and like whatever. And I, each pill is 50 milligrams of caffeine. And I've never like taken a direct like hit of caffeine i've only ever like sipped coffee or sipped like a celsius and so like when that shit hit me i was like smelling colors no they started last night with her fucking espresso martini when we out when we yeah. went out to the bar and she thought she got drugged but really it was just a strong ass espresso but yeah, so she's been cracked out since last night. But okay, so like I was saying before our tangent is that inspired by our vacation that we leave for tomorrow, we thought we would give you guys an episode about not only taking vacations, because those are very important, but really um, the importance of prioritizing like self care mental well-being creating space for yourself and your well-being uh doing things that recharge you especially like looking into the new year we kind of wanted to give you guys an episode based around you know productivity burnout self-care how to prioritize self-care and avoiding the burnout i mean i you know it's easier said than done and we tr do try to practice what we preach but we were just thinking about how we're leaving for this trip and this is really like the first true vacation in a long time. I mean, Costa Rica was a vacation, but it just, this one feels different. I don't know if it's because it's a smaller group and we just know that we're going to have more like autonomy over like what we're doing and how we're spending our time. We know we're going to like be journaling and meditating and doing yoga and like really just, just being one with the land. So excited. But I just know it's going to fill our cup so much and it feels like so good to look forward to a trip like that um and like it doesn't happen often like i find found myself very excited for this because it's like a true vacation and i feel like you know there's a difference between a trip and a vacation we take a lot of trips we don't really take a lot of vacations so like we're always kind of working like every day we're like shooting content on our trips like every single day of the trip we're shooting content so it's never like true relaxation so yeah that's a little bit about what we're gonna talk about today we have some notes and we're excited to get into it but before we do that we'll do a little catch up our highs and lows and our pro tip yes so to catch you guys up again said this like three times we're in la i've been here for about a week since um i left san francisco after my egg retrieval um i am like my my body has like finally bounced back which is such a fucking great feeling and like it's just great because like i it's like right before hawaii and you know like i've been cleared and i can like you know i don't have to worry about 
yeah, the timing's perfect. I don't have to like worry about like, you know, making a certain movement that's gonna like make my eggs explode. Um, it's a whole fucking thing, you guys. But I'm really excited for that. And um, it's funny because my fucking egg people have already messaged me. It has, it's been like, it's been like a week and like three days and they've already asked me when I'm ready to do my next one. And I'm like, I can't, like, I can't even think about it right now. You guys are, I'm, I'm, I'm their little mommy milker. I'm their little cash cow and my eggs need a break, but that's, we're not even thinking about that yet. LA has been super fun though. We went out last night with our friends and we just had a fucking ball. We did, we like, we didn't even, okay. So like we pulled up to this place that our friend told us to go because she was like hosting a karaoke night. She had like already dipped out, but we asked the guy because they had the full setup. We were like, can we just like turn this on and do karaoke? And so he like turned it on and put his phone there for us to like read lyrics off of. And it was just so much fun. Just like a chaotic LA night. And we had so much fun. You want to catch him up, brother? Yeah, so actually my catch up kind of goes into like my highs and lows of the week as well. So I'm just going to combine the two. My low is that last weekend I just had like a pretty chaotic weekend. Like I was a out a lot more than I was anticipating, which like <laughs> I'd like like to plan accordingly. And like, I like to look forward to my downtime, which also kind of is inspiring this episode of like knowing what fills your cup, knowing what recharges you and like really like maintaining those boundaries with yourself, with people in your life, AKA my fiance, who is such a social butterfly. And like, that's how he recharges. And I respect that. And I love that about him. But personally, it is not how I recharge. So I, we were just like out doing a lot, very social. And then I like, I feel like I don't get a really great, we, what we do, Jess and I is so draining throughout the week with between like the agency and the podcast. And now with the course, it's like every day I'm like, you know, as fulfilling as it is and as fun as it is it's a lot of mental bandwidth so it, it's very draining throughout the week so i really look at my weekends as like a chance to revive myself and like put like energy and life source back into my body so yeah that was i mean a long-winded answer but my low is just like i was out a little more than i wanted a lot more than i wanted to be when i wish i was just like cozied up on my couch and that kind of just like sent me down a downward spiral hence <laughs> our last episode when we i got on and i was like fresh out of a menti b a little mental breakdown um that was my low my high was and this goes into catch up too was that we did our seasonal fall boxes last week and jess was here so i delivered them with my friend actually our friend stacy who really comes in clutch for my, any like local stuff but we delivered the boxes and everyone's reactions to them were so great and like seeing all the influencers content it it all looks so good and the brands were so happy with it and just like seeing something go from conception to like finally having it in people's hands as a physical thing is so rewarding and i'm just like love all the content that the influencers did this round like everyone's giving us really quality stuff and it just it's a really good feeling and it's definitely like one of the like more fun projects we do over at mood and it feels good to like see something come to life and see it gain momentum and just getting really good feedback from people of saying like i love when you guys do this or like i love seeing like all the different projects you guys do with the agency and like this is so fun to watch you guys do like that's really validating too and nice to know that people are like enjoying that experience um so that's a high and low do you did you get your high and low okay we're we're just is gonna do her high and low my low is that i've actually been struggling i'm okay i'm i'm a libra <laughs> and i i would say that my most like prominent one one of my most prominent like you know um characteristics of the sign I, which is really interesting because i feel like i uh, i've been feeling very like libra-esque lately um but aside from that one of the characteristics i have been you know i've been noticing a lot about myself lately is indecisiveness and like how much um indecisiveness truly takes a toll on me like energetically it is it takes up so much bandwidth and when when i'm really torn between two things and it actually typically has to do 
almost always with my home and like my space like if i ever have an upcoming move like even when i was you know my lease was ending at the fort lauderdale um apartment and i didn't know where i was going like just kind of like that the unknowing and the indecisiveness of like not knowing what to do and not knowing what decision is you know quote unquote the right decision um it takes so it takes such a toll on me like it's really you know difficult for me to manage and things always work themselves out but I hate not knowing. And with this whole like LA lease thing and like also having my Fort Lauderdale lease and not being able to like Airbnb this place out, obviously that didn't go as planned and it's put me in, you know, an uncomfortable position and, you know, not wanting to pay two rents. And it's like, it's just not, you know, not an ideal situation. And it's like, I love the LA apartment so much. And if I could just like pick up this place and put it in Fort Lauderdale, that would be my ideal scenario. But, you know, I can't have the best of both worlds. And I'm like, why not? (laughs) Like, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what the best move is for me because I do like wake up and I feel lighter here. I feel like there's more possibility here. I feel more inspired here. I I, I notice these things and this is kind of like leads into our episode is like taking an inventory of like the things that feel good right and like even just like you know my daily routine and i'm i'm more i'm more active here and all these different things and and i love fort lauderdale and fort lauderdale has so many pros as well like i i love the ocean i love being near my family i love being you know i love and I love obviously being next to Olivia and I love, you know, that it's a little bit like slower there and, you know, there's so many things, but just kind of being in this, this weird limbo in between and not knowing what to do, like that just takes such a toll on me. And I'm still, I I navigate it every day and like I literally teeter. And the worst part is, is that like, I'll think that I arrived to something and then like the next day I'll wake up and be like, no, I feel like I gotta, I gotta go home or I gotta stay here. It's like, it's, oh God, I fucking hate it. I'm like, it's like I want to shut off my brain sometimes or just like pick one and stick to it. But things will always, you know, play out however they need to. But that's definitely my low because it's just taking up a ton of bandwidth. So if you guys have any tips on that, definitely send them over. And my high was just hanging out with all of my friends. Honestly, just this week and particularly last night, like I just, you know, laughing so much. And I just like, (laughs) obviously I love laughter, but like, just my friends are just fucking hilarious and so unique and it's just like it's always a time when i go out with them like it's you're guaranteed to have a good fucking time like we went to multiple bars and each bar fucking sucked but we had a good time at each one and that's how you know it's like a good night and yeah it's always just good catching up with you know my la friends and i love having olivia here and when she gets to hang out with them too because it's like you know worlds colliding sort of thing and just such a good time but that's our little high and low let's get into our pro tip okay my pro tip also goes into the theme of this episode and it's so funny because i feel like sometimes when i think about these pro tips i'm like oh that's like too small like that's like common sense or that's like you know not even a pro tip like that's just like makes sense but then again these are like real life experiences that i'm living through and realizations i'm having so i'm like okay then it's worthy of sharing with you guys Mm -hmm. my pro tip is do not work off of a master to-do list I like go through phases of the type of to-do list that I like to work with. I did go through a phase where I had three lists going on at one time and they all served a different purpose. Um, And like one of those lists included like a daily to-do list. But lately, there's just been so much piling on for a to-do list. And when I cross one thing out, two more things get added because there's just more to do at every phase of everything. (laughs) So I've ended up these last few months just doing like these master to-do lists. And then every day when I try to clock out of work, I feel like I got nothing accomplished. And it like, I just realized last week that the reason that's happening is because I have this long ass to-do list for the week that I'm trying to get through every day. And it's making, it was making me feel like I accomplished absolutely nothing. And it was giving me anxiety. It was giving me guilt. So I realized that I need to like separate it by the days and realistically 
put down what I can knock out in one day because I'm over here like I can do all 10 things and get them done today right like that's me in the morning and then me in the afternoon is like am I I'm a useless piece of shit like I because there's also stuff that I don't put on the to-do list that takes up time and needs to be done like I don't put meetings on my to-do list because I don't have to remember to do them I just know to do them but three hours later and three meetings later nothing on my to-do list got accomplished i feel like shit but i'm like i just did three hours of really productive work so that was like causing a really negative like thought pattern and like feeling that i was observing in myself so do not work off a master to-do list break it up into realistic tasks that you can do each day for me it depends on like what task that looks like but maybe it's three big tasks maybe it's seven smaller ones but really like take into consideration what can actually get done and then you can aim to get those things done and then when you highlight five things off your to-do list you can feel like you accomplished something that day because like for me what gets me through my day is literally highlighting things off my to-do list like it sparks joy it makes me feel good makes me feel like i'm like getting things done that's like my litmus test of like if I had a productive day or not is if I'm highlighting stuff off my list. So yeah, that's my pro tip. Don't do a fucking master to do this. Like I, I think it's good for a brain dump. Like an overall, this is what has to get done. Like maybe write that down on a Monday and say everything you have to get done that week. But definitely when it comes to like getting throughout the week, write daily to do list. Don't stress yourself out and don't make yourself feel like you're not accomplishing enough when you probably are. Yeah. And even to like, you know, piggyback off of that, try to like, you know, optimize your to-do list, like, like by, you know, task, right? So like, if you have a bunch of like random, you know, errands to run, try to run all the errands in the same day, right? And if you have a bunch of like admin work to do, I mean, I think this goes without fucking saying, but you know, if you got to hear it, got to hear it, do all your fucking admin work at once, you know, um, try and get into a rhythm because that's what's going to just help you knock shit out fastest. But my pro tip is a supplement actually called l-theanine and i i've I've taken l-theanine for a couple years now um and i just i really love i love the way it makes me feel and if you're like if you're predisposed to anxiety then i would say that this is definitely something that you should look into and if you're kind of just you know a high stress sort of person um you have a lot going on or even if you're like a student or whatever it is um l-theanine is a supplement like it's naturally found in green tea and it just helps promote like a sense of calm and like relaxation throughout the day huh not no yeah no not an ad at all um it's just a supplement that like i always have a noticeable difference whenever i take it and i'm typically in a in like a better mood because i'm i can be a little bitchy you know that's that's my brand you guys know that about me and i'll notice throughout the day that like if things are bothering me or if someone's annoying me i'm like a lot more like chill about it like i won't snap like i normally do i'm like definitely I, i'm just like a better version of myself on it like which i really really like love and i'm just less anxious like i notice things that like would typically make me anxious i'm just like i think we're good you know what i mean no i love it so I posted about it on my stories um, the other day, but it's just, it's a great supplement and I feel like more people should know about it. So that's my pro tip. So let's talk about today's episode. Um, again, it's really just inspired by what's been going on in our lives lately, which, you know, always feels the most organic to talk about because, you know, we always just like to keep it real with you guys and share where we're at and you know, around the holidays and with the new year coming up, both of our birthdays just passing, I think this is very a pretty introspective time for us and a good time for anyone to, you know, take an inventory of their lives and kind of reflect and get ready for the new year. Um, new year, new you. And this, again, was brought on by we were actually talking to our friend Bryce and he's, he's like, oh, you guys should talk about like, you know, your vacation and, you know, taking care of yourselves and things like that. So, yeah. So we've had this Hawaii trip planned for a while now. And we knew that like taking it during this time in like December was going to be like a pretty good way to like reset and decompress from the year. And honestly, like everything that we've been like 
going through and doing and especially like with the course and stuff a lot of the heavy lifting for the course is done um it's kind of just like admin work from now on and waiting for you know like results from like the the beta testers and then you know adjusting accordingly but um the heavy lifting is done so we can kind of like take a little bit of a breath not anything too crazy but take a little bit of a breath and um really kind of just enjoy this this space like what we needed and what we were craving was i mean at the end of the day it's it's space and it's um a little bit of like freedom and again i've never been to hawaii so i'm i'm really excited i feel like i always hear people talk about like how energetically it's just like such a powerful place and um especially with the new year coming up i think it's i mean we want to like journal and like meditate while we're there and read and kind of just really like disconnect to reconnect sort of thing yeah and i know that like taking a week-long vacation in hawaii isn't the isn't like the option for a lot of people and i don't want to like you know take that lightly or like come off any sort of like way of being privileged of being like you guys should like take a vacation (laughs) like i trust that you guys understand that we're not like that but i also want to encourage you it's this isn't just about like taking vacations it's about creating like that's like an exaggerated form of like what we're trying to get across in convey yeah because it's like what's important is taking space and taking time and like making the time in your schedule yeah whatever that looks like for you like making the time because if you don't make the time like it's just it's not gonna pop up out of nowhere in your calendar you have to be so intentional about giving yourself that space and that time whether it's to journal and reflect whether it's a day of like quite literally doing nothing and i know like not everyone is like this but i feel like for the most part if you're listening to this podcast and if you're like a listener of the show you're a you're an ambitious person like you strive for more you strive for better you're working on your personal development and like for me it's like i almost don't think about literally anything else other than bettering myself I do not have any other fucking thoughts going on in this brain. Like, if it's not work, it's personal work. And I don't know if that's toxic. (laughs) I don't know if that's toxic. You know, we've mentioned before on the show we want to find more hobbies. And that's why I think, like, this vacation is so good because it's, like, it's not literal work. It is, like, I even, like, when you look at meditation and journaling and, like, that, it's, like, still productive in some way and I think I definitely we could be better I know I could be better about letting myself just like not have to be productive like I'm always like even a meditation for me is productive and it is you know and it's and benefiting me like it, it is a great form of self-care but it's interesting to see myself like if I have nothing to do I'm like how can I better myself in this moment it's almost like an obsession um I don't know where was I going with that what was my first point yeah so like even if it's not a vacation in hawaii it's like creating giving yourself the 30 minutes a weekend yeah scheduling out a weekend for the month especially with this new year coming up and like maybe what you need to do is like dial out and see the year in like a bigger perspective and planning things more ahead of time like even with like thinking about the solo trips that i want to start taking i'm like already thinking like okay what month would be ideal for me to take that trip next year and like being intentional about creating the space and making it happen if it's taking a weekend to yourself and like truly doing only things that you know fill your cup and you know recharge you and you know will like make you show up for work better show up for your relationships better show up for you better creating that time if it's like i said the weekend or if it's 30 minutes after work 30 minutes before work and i know it's like so much easier said than done but giving yourself that space is so so important because if not you're just in this constant unconscious or like subconscious like rut of think what has to get done getting it done what has to get done getting it done and there's like so much reward and benefits that come from sitting back and like acknowledging where you're where you are now where you could be where you were and just like being introspective about your life your journey your career like and taking that inventory for example and this is funny because we talked about this last night i randomly this week had the idea and thought that i wanted to take inventory of everything that i love like 
so random what does that even mean i it would exactly what it sounds like i was just like i'm curious to see a list of all the things that i know i absolutely love you know like when people are like i mean this is like kind of morbid but whatever like when people die they're like oh she they like loved this like what's that list of the things that i love in this lifetime that bring me joy and i know no matter what i could be anywhere if i got this or heard this or felt this or ate this it would make me happy and on that list i had like anything crunchy i had bacon <laughs> i had the soft fur behind ellie's ears i had the smell of ellie's paws i had what else did i have tyler's freckles what else did i have journaling i had meditating calm music shut up <laughs> what else did i have honestly it was a very random list it came out to be a lot of like sense sensory things but it's really cool Shut up. it's really cool to like even have that like now i have an inventory i have a page of things that i know i love and when i look at that page and see everything it like fills me with joy and it's like if i if i'm ever feeling like down or stressed or whatever i can look at that page and be like these are what can i like pull from here and do for myself today or in this moment that i know i love yeah and i don't know if like other people ex i mean i'm sure other people experience this but you know sometimes like some some days you wake up and colors are less bright and the days feel long and the days feel dull and you kind of like question if everything is kind of worth it and mainly the, those days come like around my period and it's like you know that's when it's you know the most difficult but knowing like even just going through my camera roll and like seeing the things that I've taken pictures of that I thought were beautiful or that I thought was a nice moment. Like it remind, it, it, they're just like these little reminders that like life is so beautiful in these small moments, you know, and taking inventory of that is so helpful just to as, serve as a reminder to yourself that things are so beautiful. And even if things aren't beautiful right now, they will be again. And it's like this too shall pass. I also would love to encourage you guys if you aren't, if you haven't dabbled in the practice of like journaling or the habit of journaling, something I have really actually like gotten a lot more into this year. And it was somewhat intentional, but a lot of it is like I just found myself in a really good space when I was journaling. Like I, I my weeks are better when I like sat down on a Sunday and planned out my week not even planned necessarily but like brain dumped. Re brain dumped reflected I started doing my journal club if you guys are interested DM me and let me know I'll add you to the group chat and that has been really great and it's like not I don't get to it every day the challenge is to try to do the the entries and the prompt every day i don't do that no one in the group chat does it but it's just a nice little accountability reminder when you see someone else saying okay i did mine okay i did mine or sending pictures of their journal of like oh i want to do that too and it, it's like one more thing to push you towards like a healthier habit and i do different prompts every month and this month it was like what's perfect about this present moment i always like to include like what am i proud of my what am i proud of of myself for i think that's super important like so i just want to encourage you guys how to ask yourselves how often are you asking yourselves these questions yeah. how often are you telling yourself that you're proud of yourself for doing something and it can be small you know i'm proud of myself for not going out that night and not like not falling victim to FOMO. I'm proud of myself for setting a boundary with someone. I'm proud of myself for brushing my teeth today. Like whatever, speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wh whatever, it can be anything, but like nothing is too small to journal. And that's what I like try to tell my group chat when anyone joins, like a part of the rules is like, nothing is too small, write it all down because like it, it can only help you and also another thing with that is like progress over perfection like i find myself being like oh i haven't journaled in three days fuck like i i feel myself subconsciously like being like feeling guilty or like i'm slacking and you like have to get yourself out of that mindset and just show up the next day show up when you can you know and like that's all you can do so that being said, really want to encourage you guys going into the new year to look into some journaling prompts, journaling exercises. You can even start bite-sized. You can start with one prompt a day and that will take a minute, 
maybe two. There's a five minute journal. That's a really great book. Personally, I like need my journals to be spiral. <laughs> I can't like have them. I can't, I don't want to like hold it open because that's like, for me, it's a another thing that makes the habit harder right you want to make your habits as easy as possible to implement so like the fact that i can like take a spiral notebook anywhere set it down on a table not have to hold it open it's the little things but like that's really what makes what contributes to making a habit easier or more difficult to install so start journaling start with one prompt a day and then take it from there and, and like just see how it feels and see it will naturally evolve if it feels uncomfortable at first that is totally normal it's like using a muscle that you're not used to using and the more you start to use it and train it the like more easy it becomes yeah and the same goes for like meditation as well like meditation guys is it's not an easy practice especially when you're just starting out like the guy that i'm seeing he posted like he's he's a you know coach trainer kind of person whatever and he posted a like he was getting my thoughts on this challenge that he's doing and it's like an anti-rut challenge and um one of the like you know part of the challenge was a 30 minute meditation and i was like listen you and it's a six week challenge and i was like you need to scale that down to a 10 i said i said a 10 minute meditation the first two weeks a 20 minute meditation the second two weeks and a 30 minute meditation for the last two weeks because it really is something that you have to work up to and it's so fucking hard to sit there with no thoughts for 30 minutes that's a that's such a like that is such a difficult practice but you can get there and but you have to work your way up to it you know and honestly guys pro tip guided meditations they are my fucking saving grace and just i i use headspace i 10 10 recommend it's funny you say that because i have like th i've been thinking about setting this goal for myself to do an hour-long meditation this month and especially because i'm reading a book called um becoming supernatural and it's pretty much all about meditating and like tapping into like the quantum field and it's like it's pretty lit honestly but <laughs> i am like so curious to see like what would come up not would come up but like what that would look like for me because the more i have been this month i've been really good and i'm, I'm really proud of myself for being intentional about practicing meditations more because it's like i see it i see it getting easier every single time i sit down to do it i will say what makes it easier is having some sort of ritual or routine not like a serious not like yeah not like a sacrificial ritual but like having like just a routine like i know like couch outside is super comfy and it's funny because i even moved i even tried a meditation like out in the grass leaning up against my tree and it was not it i'm like okay i tried it i tried it like kudos for trying it's not it I sit in my comfy couch. I have this little crystal set that my mother-in-law got me. If I have like, you know, a Palo, Palo Santo stick or like an incense stick, I'll light that. Some sort of like something that smells super yummy. And I like set, you have to like set the mood, you know, like you have to create this, this energetic space for like, for yourself to be in that, to be able to like shift, you know, and like kind of rise to the occasion but anyways my point being is that the, the meditations are getting easier every single time and yeah it's it's like i said it's one of those muscles that you just it's so uncomfortable at first you guys it's like i understand why some people will sit down and try to do it and be like fuck that like that was pointless that was stupid yeah. never doing that again but it's like i promise they get so much easier and like just said st start with guided meditations like start with three minutes start with three minutes you can do three minutes five minutes work your way up to 10 minutes i let you i'll keep you guys posted i would love to try to do an hour i think that would be fucking lit so yeah we'll keep you posted but that is a really great thing to kind of reset yourself and it's like proven that the like your brain goes into this different state and your brain waves literally change and like it's so restorative for your body it's healthy for you i'm i'm learning so much about it through this book becoming supernatural and i'm, I'm really truly excited like i i feel like it's such perfect timing especially with like hawaii and i know the energy there is just hits different and I, I i feel it in my soul that it's just like 
such good timing for me to be like instilling this practice, going to Hawaii, starting the new year, manifesting wealth and abundance. Like it just feels so right. I love that. And and I love what you said about like when you meditate, it's like so interesting to like see like what comes up and what happens with that space. And you know kind of bringing it back full circle to taking space and you know like kind of why we wanted the vacation and everything and i i was talking to two of my girlfriends we had like a little girls night in the other night and we like it's it's like rare that there isn't like necessarily like a point to a hangout right like you're just we were simply like spending time and just like having girl talk and it was so refreshing and like in that space you know came a really inspiring and exciting idea and that's not like why you need to take space but it is interesting what happens as a result of it like because of this like you know this space that i did take where like we just like kind of talked to talk and i wasn't talking about work and i yeah i was we were just having pointless conversation and it was so interesting what naturally evolved out of that conversation was something that like you know was an idea that they brought up for me and you know is and i'll tell you guys more about it as you know it comes to fruition but it's something that like i'm you know that inspires me and that excites me and that i'm you know like excited to work on and it's just interesting how it came to be. And even in the past, I've, I've shared with you guys, like there was one day a couple years ago when I was in my Miami apartment and I, like, I took the day and I went down to the pool and I just like sat by myself, like no thoughts, just vibes. And I had the idea to create this vaginal health line, which is honestly still a very big passion of mine. I haven't quite had the space or the bandwidth to like dedicate to that, but it's still something that, you know, like in this lifetime I would love to achieve. And that came out of literally fucking nowhere. Like the entire conception of the the idea and the product and whatever and again you don't like need to take space for business ideas to come up i think it's just kind of how we're like wired and we're predisposed to that kind of entrepreneurial mindset and i know a lot of you guys are as well but you know you never know what will come of that space maybe it's you know a new business idea or maybe it's a new way to you know have conflict resolution maybe it's a you know new hobby that you want to try maybe it's you huh real yeah realizations like it's so much can happen and it's so healthy to create that space for yourself yeah and i like even like i feel like for me a lot of like reflections result as realizations that i'm like oh that makes sense or like literally like epiphanies i'm like okay that checks out but i if i don't create the space to like have those realizations they typically don't happen and we also have talked about whispers a lot in the past the og brothers will know exactly what a whisper is basically it's just like something in your subconscious and you train your brain to start listening a little bit more to those whispers like for example like the course when we thought of the idea was not a whisper it's quite literally a scream but <laughs> there's other things <laughs> there's other things um that have started as whispers and then they turn into mood the agency or they turn into whiskey and water podcast but these ideas and conceptions like they started as whispers for us and like again it's not like we're not saying your downtime <laughs> you have to be productive and like have these ideas and realizations but it just goes i think our, we're trying to make this point because i think people are so scared of not being productive and it's like not being product yeah not being productive is productive because you're you're allowing yourself the fucking clean air to inhale and breathe and like so much comes with that yeah and if you're not going to do it for yourself do it for your business your personal development your relationships in your life like i i cannot emphasize it enough like creating that space and honest and protecting it too like i think i can be better about that is like you know i my, we both spread ourselves too thin and i often don't want to let people down and i i really want to show up for everyone in my life so much that sometimes i think i do 
can kind of for forget to show up for myself sometimes so it depends on the day you catch me on sometimes i'm good about it other times i'm like really bad at it but i think protecting that space like it's sacred and like although it may seem like you just want to stay home and be antisocial, like no you that's actually you protecting your energy your boundaries giving yourself that space to rest and recover from whatever bullshit you're dealing with throughout the day at your job with friends whatever it is um yeah so so um honestly like and the homework that i would love to just give you guys for this episode is take take the time make a list and take inventory of the things that fill your cup and the things that don't like also take inventory of the things that don't fill your cup and that that drain you because that is a sign like just like it's a hack it's a fucking life hack look at the things that make you happy do more of it look at the things that drain you do less of it exit out completely like that like i i i'm even going through like a little friendship breakup right now which is crazy at my fucking ripe age of 27 but it it was a friendship that I realized months ago that started to drain me. So now that it's kind of crumbling, guys, I'm not fighting for it. I, I, I yeah. And you know, it's it's a it's a long-standing friendship, and that's okay. I'm honestly not pressed over it because again, it started to drain me. And who has the time for that? This life is so short, and like we don't have to force things. We don't have to force these friendships. People grow apart and, and, you know, it's not me, it's her, but, you know, no, I'm kidding. Man, no, I'm not. But, you know, like, it started to drain me and guess what? I'm doing less of it and I'm making the active decision to do less of it. Like, I didn't even take the time to respond to the text, the long ass text message because I was like, this has already drained me so much. I'm literally choosing to let go of the resistance that's attached to this. And I'm simply choosing peace, guys. I'm choosing myself and I'm choosing peace. And I'm choosing to be misunderstood because that's not my problem. And I'm kind of going off on a tangent here. Um, but, you know, again, that's our homework for you guys. Take take the inventory. Um, write it out. Put it in your notes app if you, you know, need that reminder whenever you're feeling down or feeling bummed out or getting discouraged, you know. And I was also telling Olivia before we, you know, started filming, like, you can also make lists for specific things, right? Like, what recharges me when I'm feeling down? What, uh, what you know, helps me out when I start to feel sad? Or like, you know, and even for, you know, for us women, like, I know that, again, around my period, shit starts to change. Like, reality is not fucking reality. My world, it, it, it honestly, it gets skewed. And so... Like, I know that I have, like, this mental list, which I could write down, of, like, things that I do when I know that my hormones start to, like, change my reality. And it's things that keep me grounded and keep me rooted in what I know to be true and to be real. Um, and I think that having that for, you know, these different aspects of your life is, is such a life hack. Like, you just... You're, it's a cheat code. It's a cheat code for yourself, like GTA. Like you're fucking stealing the jet and you're taking it over the ocean. Yeah, I love that you also mentioned like take take notes on what what fills your cup and also like who fills your cup, who who drains your cup. Like I I think a lot of times we stay in friendships, relationships, family relationships that we feel like maybe just obligated for or obligated to or like it's convenient but i strongly encourage you guys i'm even definitely practicing it in my own life like i am taking notes of how i feel when i'm around everyone i spend time with like who do i i leave you know like sometimes you leave hanging out with a friend and you feel like euphoric and that's something to take note of like you're like wow i feel so good i feel full i feel light i feel excited and then there's some that you literally feel like i don't want to do that again and you know like take note of that and don't feel bad about creating some space between you and those people in your life and honestly like not to sound like woo-woo but like if they're not honoring your highest self they don't need to be in your life 
And also, one thing I want to circle back to, like, creating the space and the whispers and things like that, something I did towards the end, this time last year, actually, is, and I mentioned this before on the podcast in the past year, I did an audit of my of my social media channels, and that was something that was a whisper, and then I actually saw it through, and I had to make space for that. It was not something I had ever done before. I wasn't familiar with it. I just made the space to do it, and in this past year, my following literally doubled. And had I not done that audit and made space to kind of reflect on like, and and that definitely has to do with work. That's less like personal development, but still it's like, had I not been intentional about taking inventory of what was working and what wasn't working and the type of content that I enjoyed making, the kind of content I didn't enjoy making, had I not sat and taken inventory, my following wouldn't have doubled last year in the past year so it's like it does that's why i say like sometimes like look at what you're doing and see if it's busy work or if it's actually like productive and adding value and efficiency to your life and to your work and your workflow and things like that and also what comes like easy to you right what comes what yeah what is the path of least resistance right and i've been struggling with my my own like personal like brand and like my tiktok and like even the content i feel like is worth sharing and valuable sharing and like you know i have a lot to say and i think that you know when it comes to like my entrepreneurial self the podcast is my favorite medium for that because it's the path of least resistance i'm able to have a long form conversation with you know my business partner and you know other entrepreneurs and but like i also i don't feel that pull on tiktok like i do not like like to sit down and like talk entrepreneurial to my camera like it's hard to do it's like doesn't come naturally to me but the other day I went to a thrift like flea thing and I did this like I did like a come with me and like we'll see what we get and that came so easy to me it like felt good to do I was inspired to edit it and it also and I think that as a translation of that it it performed well on my TikTok not like super well but like it had really high engagement and like you know it was just kind of like a sign and i'm like okay this feels good i'm gonna do more of that and it's even like you know when it is when you do come to like taking an inventory of what's working for you and what's not you know think about what feels light and easy and enjoyable to do and what like you gravitate towards naturally even if it's not like you know like would forcing myself to do entrepreneurial content like maybe play out for me better in the long run like if i like well, no, it, would, it wouldn't because it's forced. But you know what I mean? Like thrift content isn't like the path that's going to like expedite me to Forbes 30 under 30, even though that's one of my goals. Like, but it is what I enjoy doing. And as long as you're putting out content that, and it's not just about content, but as long as you're producing stuff and work and in life that feels light and feels easy to do, then, you know, things are going to pan out in favor of that. Yeah, I I even think that's such a great tip for like influencers and content creators too. And we talked about it in last week's episode with Kate is like, do what feels good, like create content with what feels good. It's even funny. I was doing like a pack with me for vacation, um, like trying to do a video for that. And like, I'm so used to seeing girls do those videos a certain way. I didn't even realize that I was like, like making myself do it this not emulating but i was like making myself do it this certain way and i was like not going outside of that i was doing like even though it would have been easier so i like realized that and i was like oh for example like i had my camera set up my light on and i had this like angle and i was like okay well now i need to do like the whole video in this angle and then i was like no the fuck i don't i can bring my camera down to the because i'm like i'm sitting on the floor packing like this is actually what packing looks like for me why am i gonna stand up and pretend that i'm like packing standing up and like picking between these outfits i'm like that's fake as fuck like that's not how i pack i pack on the floor and I look a just disheveled mess and that's like the reality and it's just funny because I'm like oh like why I can just do this my way it doesn't have to be this way you know and I think like as content creators it's so hard not to just like we see something that's working and we just want to do it that way too and hope that it works and like something I'm just like working on right now is just like how do I want to do this what truly comes natural to me like how whether it's like 
storytelling or like you know trying to decide what type of content we want to share entrepreneurial or spiritual whatever it is i'm like really trying to just figure out like how what feels natural to me and like what format feels natural like what feels good what feels like the path of least resistance because that is so hard to figure out like it's hard to figure out for yourself and then like trying to figure out how to like share that with an audience on all these different platforms is like a whole other story but with all that being said I hope you guys found value in this episode. I kind of feel like this was like a big sister pep talk. Like it's giving big sister vibes and I kind of love that. Um, So yeah, I I really hope you guys found value in this and going into the new year, I I hope you guys carry these things with you. And even just when you're thinking about these new year's resolutions and these new goals that you want to carry out the year with, carry with you throughout the year, I do want everyone to really take this to heart because it's like this is like straight off the dome coming from our real life current experience in life to you guys and like that's you know that's all we can ever do like this is not scripted this is like what we're we're experiencing every single day and like our life lessons that we're currently learning so i just i hope you guys like love it and find value in it and i hope you feel like we're your big sisters because we are (laughs) or brothers brothers. we're your big brothers (laughs) All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please, please, please take a screenshot, share this on your story, tag two friends. I would absolutely be thrilled if you guys left a review because we haven't gotten a fucking new review in a minute and we never ask for reviews. So that's kind of our bad. Um, But we are going to start asking that of you guys. So if you guys feel compelled, we would absolutely love a review. The reviews dead ass make our day like they make us so happy so if you guys want to put a smile on our face please go leave a review and we love you guys we'll see you in hawaii we'll be filming from there and um if you guys have any like questions or anything you guys want us to talk about or if you need direction on anything we are here for you guys and happy to you know we, we don't need to make an entire episode about whatever it is but you know we can do a little like q a sort of session or you know happy to just you know reference anything that you guys would love to hear more of on the pod so never be shy to ask us for that and hope you guys have a fantastic week love you guys love you brothers bye